Welcome back, everyone. We're going to continue on with our Color Style Writer 1500 project. Uh, where we left off with this printer is, um, well, we unboxed it from its original box where it was placed in 1996 and never removed since. And we set it up on the Macintosh Performa 575 that I have in my living room. We then proceeded to unpack the cartridges and immediately, immediately I knew something wasn't right. When you open that cartridge uh, from its original package, there wasn't that hiss that you want to hear with a brand new sealed cartridge. And they were definitely, definitely gummed up beyond all hope. They could be revived, maybe with some isopropyl alcohol injections, but I'm not going to bother. Here's the original black cartridge, and the color cartridge has already been thrown away. Um, so fortunately, Apple did not specify custom cartridges for the StyleWriter 1500 when they had the printer manufactured under contract by Canon. In fact, Canon used their standard BC02 and BC05 cartridges. Remember, this is a single cartridge printer, meaning you have a choice between crisp, razor sharp black text, or you can put in your tricolor cartridge and you'll end up with kind of a muddy brownish. More modern printers and more expensive printers from that time period use two cartridges, one being the tricolor and one being your black. As a side note, there was the option of adding a, um, a special print head with a two cartridge system to this printer. In fact, I've seen one in my life. And what it does is it takes two smaller uh, Canon bubble jet cartridges and it allows you to have both black and color without removing the cartridges from the printer. Now I went online and I purchased two color cartridges as I don't plan on doing a lot of text and uh, being able to print text with a color cartridge only is a really interesting novelty option that I might end up using anyway. So if this works out, I will invest in some black cartridges. They're so incredibly cheap, why not? So in this package, we have two brand new cartridges. They are old stock, so they may be bad. Now, one, of the th one thing I want to mention about ink cartridges is sometimes like MREs, they will live well beyond their expiration date. Um, even though the manufacturer only specifies and formulates them to last just a couple of years, in many cases you can get them to, to be usable for decades beyond that. Um, and I want to emphasize one more point. If you're collecting Apple products, I highly recommend the Apple Image Writer 2 um, because Supplies aren't that hard to find, and if you have a dried out ribbon, you can simply pop the cover off and rejuvenate it with WD-40. In fact, that's how I rejuvenated my black cartridges, and they work just fine. So let's open this package up and take a look at what we got. Take that out, it might have my address on it. Okay. All right. Nice. Now let's get these out on a tray. Nice. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to open up one of these cartridges and see if it's still sealed or if we're going to have the same bogus problem we had with the original Apple branded cartridges. Now these are, I don't, they're not in retail packaging for some reason. I don't know why. But let's take this one apart and see. Let's listen for that hiss. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Nice. If you guys don't know what I'm doing, um, watch Steve MRE 1989 info. Just, just do it. You'll be glad you did. All right. <laughs> now I can already tell right off the bat that this cartridge is good. It has some weight to it. The original BC or the, the the Apple brand color cartridge that I got with the printer had no weight at all. In fact, this black one is it's like there's nothing in it. And what happens is the isopropyl alcohol seeps out and evaporates. What happened to my original cartridge is the seal failed, likely because the alcohol evaporated into the container and it dissolved the uh, sealant or the adhesive that holds the seal on. And once that happens, it's game over, dude. All right, let's fire up the old Mac and see what we can do. 
That's me. Hi. Okay. Turn the printer on. take the cover off this. Now there's no date on this cartridge so I don't really know how old it is. But here's what it contains. Isopropyl alcohol and glycerin. Glycerin, I'm not really sure. Maybe that's what they suspend the uh, the pigments in. I don't know. But all right. So we gotta, we gotta pull this thingy off here. Okay. Now you can tell that this is nice and sealed on. That's a good sign. This is a probably a good cartridge. Okay cartridge in there. All right. Now, there's a special reason why I'm doing this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I made some changes to a, uh, a text document that was included with some software. And we're going to print out just the first page of this document and see what we get. Um, I'm going to do uh, da -da 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 page one to one, color, plain paper, this does. Folks, this will be the first successful print attempt from this printer since it was manufactured and tested at Canon's facilities in 1996. If it fails, it won't be the first time. But if it works, I will invest in more ink. I'm going to buy maybe two black cartridges just to have them on hand. Um, they are dirt cheap. I think I paid $10 for both of these cartridges. So, you know, good luck finding a cheaper way of refilling it. You can ref if you get a, a good set of cartridges, you can refill them with the syringe type refill kits. Now, whether modern refill kits will work with this old thing, I don't know. It could cause a chemical, um, chemical reaction if you use the wrong stuff. I don't know what will happen. So far, it looks good. Um, let's see what we get. This, my friends, I don't, the camera won't pick up on this, but the, the black text is almost a grayish color, but you'll notice that there are no clogged jets, no banding, no, no issues at all. It's actually in really, really, it's a really crisp printout. In fact, one of the best I've seen from a Mac. I'm gonna call this a win. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do something even cooler. We're gonna take our 
DC40 camera, we're going to take a picture and we're going to print it out. Now, are there batteries in this thing? I don't think there are. I think I left it. I left it bone dry. Oh, there's batteries in it. Sweet. All right, I'm going to go take a picture and we're going to print it out and see what it looks like. Full battery. Flash is ready to go. 44 shots remaining. Okay, so it turns out I had a problem where the camera was set to the wrong model. Um, it was looking for a DC-50, not a DC-40. Uh, so, we're all good to go. What was happening is it would crash the software. I would force quit the software, and if I wanted to go restart the soft, the, the image uh, mover thing, it would uh, cause the machine to freeze. Okay. Um, but now that we're all squared away with that, uh, we have one image we're going to move. I'm going to move it to... I thought I had a folder for... Uh... I'm going to make a folder called Pictures. There we go. Now we're dumping the camera's memory. There we go. Camera was, uh, I think, the best seller of 1994. So we're we're period correct here. But one of the things I want to get back to is uh, using the image writer as a printer to display with your vintage hardware. Um, if you have a Mac made between 1985 and 1996, the image writer 2 is a perfect companion printer because it is period correct and they're pretty much guaranteed to work. Um, but if you want to be a little more daring and you want to play with a Style Writer 1500, you can still get cartridges and they're plenty cheap. So that's actually quite good. So let's open up our picture. This is a picture of the mountain across the street from my house. I'm going to now shut my camera off to serve, uh, preserve battery life. It's a nice picture. Can you see it? No? Let's zoom in a little more. Ah. Now that's the picture we're going to print out. That's going to be the very first photograph ever printed from this printer since ever. So let's go ahead and do it. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to try to print without turning the printer on. I think it has auto on capability. We'll find out. Plain paper. I'm going to do uh, normal mode. Print. Okay. It's gonna have, there it goes, auto on. 1996 was a good year for Energy Star.
Okay, that took forever, but in 1996, people weren't really that concerned about print speed. They were just concerned that they could actually get a color printout from their desktop computer. Now, this is the mountain scene. Let's see if I can get a better view of this. We'll uh, move to a different spot. That's razor sharp. I'm just kidding. Here it is. See if I can line it up just right. Oh, the wind! The wind! Mm. Hold it this way. Forget it, man. Should have brought out that cutting board. There you go. It's not bad. It's not bad for 1996. Not bad at all. 94, 1994 computer, 94 camera, 96 printer, 2018 camera, this one, and a 4 billion BC mountain. Not bad. Not bad.